Alrighty, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra's Lair. I am your host, Larry the Chupacabra, and we're back. And this time, we're going to be starting a new series, the Let's Relax series. Or maybe what we'll call it, the Relaxification Podcast. Just so I can, like, so compete I... with Polaris in their co-optional <laughs> podcast. Relaxification Nation. Hey, that works even better. Maybe. All yours. So we're here with, uh bunch of random scrubs and Mozzie, my buddy, and we're gonna just kind of talk about different stuff and chill out for an hour and murder stuff in this game called Killing Floor. And if you're unfamiliar with Killing Floor, it's a game all about shooting, you know, I guess you could consider them zombies or genetic experiments gone mad, but basically people we don't feel bad about shooting in the face. Yeah, especially the head part, because it'll go pop like a pimple. It's like... That Greek wedding movie, yes, except yes. more like Zombieland. So we're in the clandestine nightclub, <clears throat> and we're going to murder all sorts of people, and mostly in their heads. And I do know some backstory about these critters, but the reason why I like playing Killing Floor is for holidays, even though this game is kind of on the older side now, it's been out since like 2009, and it's, it was kind of dated when it came out, because it was running on an older version of the Unreal Engine. But they keep adding stuff, and they... Grenade, grenade. What? Oh, the grenade only kills you. <laughs> kills you. I must have run into my <laughs> own grenade. I almost killed you again. Yeah, so they, they do a nice job of reskinning these critters for different events. And for Halloween, they're a bunch of crazy hillbillies with banjos and NASCAR shirts, and some of them are just torsos. And all of the racist. Yeah. And so this game's actually they also have like a uh -oh, one of our dudes died. They also have a successor coming to this game. Um it I I'm not sure if it's like a sequel or a a, a direct successor or a spiritual successor. But it looks like it has most of the same critters in it. So it should be interesting to see where they go with it. Along Lasers, with... Lasers, guns, headshots, and not into zombies. Uh, excuse me, zombies. Then I'm, uh, I'm game. But yeah, they've, uh, they've definitely got all those tasty things. One thing that they've definitely talked about is, like... As I'm sure you guys are seeing as I'm shooting stuff... They have, like, the most delicious head-popping mechanic where, like... Their brains and blood and bits just spurt all over the place. And it's very satisfying if you're into that kind of thing. Well, there's also no reticle. If you probably noticed that, so it's all from the hip or iron sights. It's all sorts of fun, really. Just to give you that more rugged feel. Yeah. Like if, like it's highly unlikely in a Nazi zombie apocalypse or a zombie apocalypse. They don't have to be Nazis. Uh, that you'll have a with laser sights. So this will give you a more down to earth feel when you're blowing somebody's face up. Exactly. Where's these last zombies? I am out of ammo, sir. Oh, uh, well, are they over by you? Yep. How did you run? Two of them on me, and I'm dead! Oh, that's awkward. Hey, for no bullets. You can knife them, you know. I was knifing them, they still killed me. You can knife their head, and it pops off like a pimple. I was using the knife thing, man. It wasn't doing shit. So, Mozzie, how has your day been today? I mean, I can't complain too bad. I've had a very nice breakfast of cheese ravioli, and now I'm sipping on some Dr. Pepper and Captain Morgan. Oh, that's awesome. I'm, uh, I'm of course, having a lovely coffee with whiskey. Just uh, yes. spend the middle of my Wednesday when I should be working, but I, I've been suffering from the crappiest migraine for the last couple of days. It's sort of under control today, but it's not really the best. So let's go upstairs here. We've kind of seen the dance floor. Not to mention... Nothing goes better with migraines, zombies, and firearms than good old-fashioned alcohol. It's true. And when I voted through the mail, because I have mail-in ballots for voting here in Colorado, um, right before we voted, I was screwing around with a pellet gun and a rifle with my father, and then we went and voted, so we were truly American. Well, as long as they don't try to take their damn guns away, they get your vote. Yeah, I guess. I mean, really, the only thing... We, I, we're not going to do anything with the rifle. My father and my mother used to hunt a long time ago before they had kids. My mother not wasn't so much into it, even though she had weapons. It was just kind of something they did to kind of hang out and bond. 
Which I suppose bonding over murdering of animals probably not the worst way to go about doing it. I mean, there's an incredible emotional attachment that comes from killing somebody in front of each other. And I'm about to die again. I s somebody needs something. Uh, sure. I mean, you know, a lot of, uh, like, PETA would probably disagree Where with are you, you saying that... I'm right in front of you. Oh, is that you? Oh, that's yeah. awkward. PETA would probably disagree with you, uh, referring to animals as non-people. Uh, I mean, at know. the same time, though, I'm sure you're aware that PETA, mostly when they retrieve animals, take to their shelters, they actually kill the vast majority of them they themselves. Do? Yeah. They have some of the highest, um... Put you know rate of putting animals down in their unquote rescue shelters of any organization. Now muffins. Let's not use politically correct shit, okay? They, let's call it what they it is. They inject them with poison animal and murder them. Sweet, delicious, sultry animal murder. That's awkward. Not... Who just died? Is that you? No, I'm not. Okay. Some of the puppies in this game are a little um out of sorts. You can get quickly overwhelmed if you don't pay attention. I'm actually, oh, last time I just ran out of ammo. I'm playing this without um, sound right now, so it's very easy for these critters to sneak up on you. I'll have to rebalance the audio after the fact. You know, having uh, having played this, like I played Nazi Zombies just the other day, I kind of like Killing Floor more than Nazi Zombies. Uh, mainly because I just think Call of Duty is overrated. But, you know, it, it gives you a... Uh, oh, I thought you were talking about, like, the Sniper Elite Nazi Zombies. Uh, oh no, the, the, really? There's Nazi zombies in more than one? That's just dumb. Actually, I think that the Sniper Elite people had their Nazi zombie game before Call of Duty did. But then money. So basically what, what the people who made the Sniper Elite series did is... Before they made Sniper Elite 3, they made the gimmick game running off Sniper Elite 2 of uh, Nazi zombie... Uh, just sniper elite Nazi zombie army, and you basically just went around killing satanic zombies. That was their kind of version. It wasn't like mutagenic zombies that were from like a viral plague or anything. It was um, these were ones that would get you if you don't accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Even then, um, basically, since it was kind of well established that Hitler had an obsession for the occult, they just sort of ran with the notion that they went all the way and they had like a Plan Z as a backup. And so, the first game, you have to retrieve the books of binding and life and summons and stuff so that you can go travel and shoot Hitler in the face and undo everything, being murdery and Nazi. -y. They've got, like, kamikaze zombies and, like, resurrection zombies and sniper zombies. Basically all the bad parts of the Bible. Yeah! It was kind of tasty. Hello, crawlers. But to kind of tasty, tell you guys... Tasty, tasty Bible. About the different zombies in Killing Floor. You've got these guys with the banjos normally have got just like a blade attached to a stump of an arm that they just run up, they sprint to you, and they start slicing you up, and they're called Gore Fast. There's a there's some story behind where each of these critters came from. They're really just they're like military experiments to create like a slew of cheap, easy to manufacture soldiers for the war. And, um, the guy who was making them was just kind of crazy to begin with. So he was actually making these out of, like, parts of his family that he didn't like. So, um, this, this chick here in the bathrobe is, like, I think one of his ex-wives or girlfriends or something who wanted to be a singer, so he just made it so that they can only sing dangerously. And they scream. They're like a siren is what they're normally called. And they don't look too different from what they are now. They're just usually in a straight jacket, but here they're like somebody's redneck wife in a bathrobe. And then these clots are like his son. He tried to save his son, and his son died of like a brain aneurysm from a clot in his head, and he tried to bring him back, and they just turned into these mindless zombies. And I don't remember where these the gore fests came from, per se. Okay, I'm getting murdered. Previously, I was a lot better at the headshots without using the iron sights, but not so much anymore. God, holy... Jesus, the, the freaking... The one time the stealth bitches get me. How long have we been recording for? Like, okay, getting stabbed. 
stuff from behind. The recording is actually not on. It is. I just didn't start the timer to tell how long we've been recording for, so I just gotta pay attention. Oh, these little crawlers are such a pain in the butt. Normally these torsos are like little spider monsters, but they reskinned them as redneck torsos, which I thought was kind of clever. I mean, it's not the worst way to go about doing it. And later we've got these guys with chainsaws that are like wearing an animal head. For some reason. Uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre meets... Oh shit, I had something for this. I don't know. It just seems rednecky. They just, like, are obsessed with hunting, and they're just like, I've got a deer head or a piggy head on my face. I'm gonna wear it. Yeah. So I guess we're gonna go into the topics that we kind of picked out to try and talk about um, current events. The one thing that is um, kind of on a lot of people's minds in the indie uh, scene, or it is if they use the Unity game engine, is the former um, CEO of EA... John Reticio, or whatever his last name is, he is going to become the CEO of Unity. And, um, well, the first thing I'm sure on a lot of minds of people well, is... he did such a good job with EA! Well, he's the former EA CEO. He's not been responsible for some of the dumbest crap that they've done lately. However, you know, being a part of EA in some respects lately, even if you weren't at the helm or involved when all this stuff was happening, kind of taints your reputation in the eyes of consumers. Understandably so. Yeah, the freaking NHL game was shit. Like, they had so many complaints that, like... Well, I, was, I think fights were taken out or something? I was talking with Triad, my other buddy, uh, that Mozzie knows about this, yesterday when we tried to film the first Let's Relax, but uh, my recorder didn't screw it up because I was trying to, like, screen share with him on a solo playing game at the time, and that didn't really pan out so good. But, um, he basically determined that he was responsible for some very nice indie games getting made. And, you know, he's done a lot of stuff that kind of redeems him in a way, like he was responsible for making sure that the original Dead Space kind of got as far-reaching as it did, to some respect. And we kind of determined that we feel like the reason they kind of partnered with him to move on with and expand Unity as a business was that companies like oh the Crisis Engine and the Unreal Engine they are really trying to open their engines up inexpensively for smaller indies and indie groups to use it and if they have a game they can just license it a lot easier so it makes their core business as being, like, the easy-to-port, easy-to-approach engine, kind of puts that in peril very slightly, now that all the other, you know, engines are trying to basically mimic what they were working on. So the idea behind hiring somebody as high a profile as, as John would have been to use his connections in the gaming world to try and further the um, acceptance and support for the Unity game engine. And I fully support that, really. Because I like games that are made in Unity. A lot of my buddies who, in the indie community that I've met through Twitter in the last um, six months have been doing a lot of work with Unity. And I'd like to see it so that a lot of different publishers, a lot of different um, platforms just provide Unity with better overall support and optimization. Because I'd like to just see Unity be everywhere, and with a lot higher profile games being made for that engine. We'll see where uh, it goes. What uh, what games were made by Unity? Um, they're not just... really by Unity, but a lot of other developers use Unity. Like, most recently I played, like, Air Brawl, which was made in Unity. Um... What's on my phone? There's a bunch of stuff that's on my phone that was made in Unity. A lot of the mobile games that you'll find on the Humble Bundle right now are made in Unity. I'm trying to think okay. of some higher profile games that were made in Unity. We'll look at the net during the next wave, in between the next waves, because we're kind of shooting zombies right now. That was kind Not of cool. Uh, 
But, um, so... What else is on our lovely list for looking at stuff? We have, uh... Fucking crawlers, always screwing up my aim. I'm gonna back off into the room. What? Every zombie game have crawlers. Um, I mean, it's kind of expected. Not all zombies stay in one piece all the time. Not all zombies stay in one piece? All the time. Or at all, I guess. Um, so what else is in our list of stuff? Um... Not a, a super lot. I mean, the one thing that I noticed from the Steam community recently was, um, the developer of Paranautical Activity getting spicy with Steam support and threatening Gabe Newell's life on Twitter and getting his game pulled from Steam as a result. Now, that was that just interesting. Seems like a silly. I mean, I've played Paranautical Activity on my channel before, and the best way to describe that is like a three-dimensional Doom game with voxel-style graphics that's kind of been brought up to the mainstay of um, gameplay and like procedurally generated levels, so that's kind of arcadey. You can, it's always kind of different each time, and there's different weapons you can run with each time. So, okay. yeah, he, I kind of liked it, and I was kind of sad to see that just when it's coming into full release and people are going to really start to play and enjoy it, that he's going to get spicy with Steam support. And this is all because they put up the wrong banner when it came out. They put up his old banner that said, Now Available on Early Access, instead of the now available in full release banner. That's great. And honestly, oh, here's the chainsaw guy. Honestly, I mean, certainly that's a damper on your business. But all you gotta do is get in touch with Steam support and ask them, Hey, it took you guys a while to get in touch with me to fix this. Would it at all be possible for you to just extend the time that the Sorry, banner is visible so that see people can see being. it? And so they just got mad at him for threatening Gabe Newell because he got mad and had a, you know, uh, an immature moment, and they pulled it from Steam. And honestly, besides his, his you know, moment of lapse of judgment and how to handle that situation, I think that maybe Steam themselves should have taken the initiative in this situation to get an apology from him, and he did apologize, and then get everything sorted out. And I, th I would have had a lot more respect for Steam if they had done that. And that's not really what they did. And the reason why I say that, instead of just letting them kind of make the decision that they made, is that Steam is very much like Google. They're a very hands-off company. They, they make it very difficult to get in contact with them for just about anything. And that's a pain in the ass for people. It is. It's not something that you should have. It just makes getting problems sorted out very difficult. And so, I, in the basement. it is what it is, but you can work our way up. It's not too hard. But, um, I mean, it just makes doing business on the platform, especially with Steam being the largest PC platform, very, very difficult. So... Yeah, I mean, I kind of feel for the guy. He's put a lot of work into that, and, you know, game development is is very difficult business to be in. So I kind of, I understand where he's coming from. When they, when they, when they club something that you're really passionate about, it can be an emotional experience when you're trying to get them to fix it. That said, you know, he's still on the Humble Store. He's still on all the other indie game markets that he's on. And I recommend people pick up Paranautical Activity, because it's a game I've had a lot of fun with so far, even though I'm not necessarily supremely good at it. So that was kind of like the example of, when you're on Twitter, never never tweet angry about something. Don't Try not to get up on a soapbox about something that in hindsight you'll consider silly. Because Twitter is just, 140 characters is just enough space to say something stupid and get yourself in trouble a lot of the times. Twitter is basically like, it's worse than text messaging. You can get yourself in trouble with text. What the fuck can you do on Twitter? Pretty much. Alright, let's see here. We 
Skrakes are a pain in the butt. They are. They need so, something that will just kill them. The background behind the Skrakes is usually they just look like a, like a creepy butcher guy in an apron and face mask who um, has a chainsaw. And his backstory was he was going to be designed as a mass-produced combat medic that could stand a lot of trauma if he had to get into a combat situation. However, because of the psychological stress that they were put under in testing, almost all of them went insane and started carving up their patients on the operating table instead of trying to save them. Who would have known? Yeah. So, they have a high pain threshold when you start shooting at them, and if you shoot at them and you don't kill them very quickly, they'll go berserk and they'll start sprinting at you and try to touch your face. If you haven't guessed by these, like, posters on the wall, we're in, like, a Russian nightclub that was built inside of a bunker that's full of murder and zombies. So basically every Russian nightclub. Yeah, more or less. I mean, except there's, like, not underage kids fighting in the bathroom. Complete with glory hole. Yay! Take yourself down to the glory hole, the glory hole, the glory hole. Uh, take yourself down to the glory hole and get yourself some cash. I was gonna say, and yeah, put your dick in the hole. I mean, that depends on who you are. Like, if you're giving the service and you need some quick cash, every time someone, like, comes on to our uh, gaming mumble and or says they... Or if you're giving the cash and you need a quick blowjob. Yeah. Every time someone gets on here and says, like, oh, I really wish I had enough money for this thing, and I was just like, I just start singing my trademark glory hole song, really. <laughs> Bet you didn't know that about Larry. Bet you didn't know I was the, the glory hole spokesman. I bet. Bet you didn't know that he was Chupacabra. You just gotta cover. figure out your feedback, Mozzie. You, you want yeah, a headset? I was logging. I am on a headset. Your headset sucks. Oh, we got a uh, thingy here. Oh. This is a flesh pounder. His arms are meat grinders, or in this case, he's a hillbilly excavator. And he basically, he just goes insane, and his lights on his body turn red, and he goes berserk and rapes you. There's really no other way to Pound describe your flesh, that. Really? Yeah, that's the reason why they call him Flesh Poundy. It's not just his nickname from school because he had a chronic masturbation issue in high school. We'd like to take a moment and uh, raise awareness. Uh, it's a serious issue. Uh, yeah, I mean... Several teenage boys between the ages of 13 and 72 suffer from uh, chronic masturbation disorder. Yeah, and that can wreck that thing if they're not careful. I mean, sure, it's a fun ride while it lasts, but you need that equipment for adulthood, bro. Unfortunately, the only known cure is a uh, girlfriend. Or one of them fleshlights that looks like a dog. But fleshlight would also be masturbation disorder. I mean, not if it's a really good one. I mean, it is healthy. I mean, the like definition of masturbation, masturbation is sex with yourself. True. But if that's sex with a fleshlight, though, does that still count? I think so. God damn it. My ears popped. Ah, ah, I get it. Haha. Uh -huh. Okay, I'm gonna throw some grenades. You're only half dead. You're almost all dead now. Yep, yes, a little would, awkward. Uh... Oh, you gotta spawn you. I'm probably gonna die, but, um, yeah. Oh, that masturbation... Masturbation is a healthy thing people do. It is recommended by... Oh, what is hurting me? There's a freaking... Uh, there's little... Oh, cute... goodness. Oh, I'm dead. I got, I got hooked up on a little crawler. They're hard to see when they're not looking like spiders. Oh, well. That's good for your mental health. It's good for your stress. Good for all sorts of things. You know, if you're ever feeling too stressed, it's probably because you're not masturbating enough. I mean, and they also say that like it can it can delay the the onset of like menopause in men and women by by a few years. Maybe not women because that's about your eggs, but definitely for men. Oh, we could go to Hellride. Hellride is just um, it's a literal carnival ride from hell. I believe I have played in Hellride, but oh, you were saying that for the sake of the folks. Well, you have, but we can say it for both our sakes. Like, Mozzie just started playing, so he hasn't seen all the maps yet, by any means. Nope. Alrighty. How am I only level two? I'm gonna switch to Firebug and use the flamethrowers. How am I only level two? 
Sometimes it takes a while for your stats to update on the servers. No, no. I feel like I'd be at least level 3 by now. I mean, you can look at how close you are. It's all about yeah, your no, headshots. I did. Yeah, basically what happens is, like, the servers only report home so often to re-report to Steam what your rank level is. And you can... The reason I do that is because you can level other perks even without them equipped. So if you right. do a lot... You can level Demolition's perk by just throwing grenades. That's how I leveled mine. I've almost never played it. So this is kind of, um... Pain in the ass level. Just because... There's... You can't just kite them, really. Well, they, they spawn everywhere. I'm probably gonna have to mute some of these in-game people when I rebalance the audio, because some of these guys we'll are talking. I mean, they I normally leave that on. Such insult things to say. And much like any game with built-in voice chat, they only really say stupid crap in these games, unless they're your friends and you just don't want to use Skype or something. Jesus Christ! Case in point about my thing about saying that this can be a little bit on the spicy side. Yeah, no shit. Spawn points are everywhere. Yeah, like pretty much every duct in the ceiling. Good thing I've got fire grenades. This is why I picked Firebug for this map. So the Firebug perk gives me, um, at level 2, it gives me, like, fire grenades. I'm almost to level 4, and it makes it so I'm nearly immune to fire damage, because otherwise my flamethrower can, like, backsplash on me and light me on fire. And usually when you first start this game, if you want to use the flamethrower, you'll end up killing yourself a lot with it. So it can be just a touch awkward. Also, your other um, main class weapon is the Mac-10, and as a firebug, it lights people on fire. And if I had the DLC for it, I could buy a flare gun. And then the trench gun is a fire shotgun. Don't ask me where that's from, but they just said, hey, it's a trench gun. What else is on our listy of things that I wanted to talk about? We got the EEA CEO. Um... I got something I've got a gripe about recently. Um, I got a message from my network. I'm networked with TGN. And TGN said that YouTube is making some changes to the way partnered YouTube accounts work yet again. And so, normally, the reason why you'd want to get um, partnered with a network on YouTube, even if you don't have a lot of um, viewers and you don't make an excessive amount of money doing what you do, is because... It kind of gives you, like, a blanket protection against a lot of, or some, of the automated behaviors on YouTube that you would have to deal with if you were just a, a regular schmo uploading his gameplay videos of Call of Duty, for example. And that is, if I want to monetize a video, I don't have to go through, like, YouTube's moderation cues. They look at it to make sure you have all the necessary rights, which is kind of draconian and inefficient at what it does. It's mostly done by really stupid robots, essentially. So, the changes that have been made... So, you kind of bypass that, and... Supposedly, um... The... The, like, various content ID claims are a little bit more... Um, lenient towards scanning your channel. It's sort of assumed that if you're partnered, you're a good boy. Basically, a good boy or girl. So they kind of let you do your thing without too much question. And I think that's pretty fair, honestly. But now they're doing this thing where they can do monetization suspension on your account, which apparently they've done to most YouTube accounts for the last several months, which is if you have, you know, a lot of different content claims on your channel, they can review your channel and disable monetization, and if you're a good boy for six months, and you, you mind your P's and Q's, then they will let you restart monetizing videos again. I'm, I'm not really going to get hit by this change, per se, because I don't have any of those claims against my channel. I'm just... All of my stuff is very fair use. And the few people that have been content ID'd for various silly reasons, I've been able to contact the entity and have it removed, because that's all done by bots, and most of those companies don't care. 
But the one thing that kind of annoys me is having, like, all of my videos re-enter the YouTube monetization queue, which is they're thinking about doing that again for networks. And I think that's really disrespectful of YouTube, quite frankly. Like, if I had to really pit it one way to describe it, it is highly disrespectful. Because part of the reason why you're being partnered is because the networks have looked at what you make and they say it's reputable, it's something people would be interested in seeing more of, and they, you know, they, they partner with you and they kind of put their reputation on the line to a certain degree. And they're, they're in the business of making sure you keep your stuff under control. Because they're, all their money is made on YouTube, and having YouTube mad at them is not in their best interest. So, I mean, you've basically just been declared as a reputable source, and to go back and say that maybe you're not reputable and claim that it's being done to protect, unquote, your content from abuse from copyrights holders is disrespectful and a little bit insulting to me. It is. It's highly offensive. And I I'm hope dead. YouTube takes note of that, because that's the truth. It is an offensive bit of bullshit that they've decided to engage in. You're about this to is why have a bunch coming from behind. It's fine. Bothers me not at all. There they are. Yeah, these other guys have got their stuff together. I mean, I remember Mozzie as a firebug. I can just spritz them once, and then they'll burn to death before they reach me. See the truth. So just stick, just stick next to me as I kind of bob and Poor weave, guy. and you'll be all right. Oddly, as a game as grindy as this is to level the perks in this game, this is a game that I found has an ex a bizarre amount of replayability. Of all of all games, of all things, really. Just because something about the challenge of different maps and the bizarre terrain. Inside of like uh, and urban this. centers, yeah, that's like really that, nice. I like that people can create their own maps in this game. Oh yeah, the Doom is. map is awesome. As much as the old Unreal map editor was a pain in the ass, and I actually um, started working on a map for our gaming group ISG a while ago. It's like half done, but they made some changes to the editor tools, and I couldn't figure them out, and I just gave up. But um, like. It's still a manageable thing to get the textures and start editing this. And you get a lot of really goofy maps that you can play on and install on your own server. Yeah, there's just something about it that I like. And the other thing is, like, almost every holiday has got, like, a weird skin thing going on for the characters. And you might not be able to see it on my screen, but you can probably see my weird gloves. I'm a homeless Santa. Um, there's a key binding I can't remember to see what my character looks like. And so I, I did some of the Christmas achievements. You only had to do like seven of them and you could win the Santa skin. And so I'm Cookies, the homeless Santa. That's what we named the skin. I think it's quite <laughs> appropriate. Well, okay. So the story behind Cookies, the homeless Santa was... Me and my friend Russ were playing on a 60-person server... And, like, a bunch of the puppies were constantly, sneakily locking us into rooms and getting us killed. So, um, the only guy who was uh, consistently living and having to kill, like, a couple hundred and sometimes thousands of monsters at a time was this Berserker, which is the melee class in this game that you can play as. And his name was Cookies. And that was the first time I'd ever seen the skin, and I said, I want that skin. I don't have to, I don't care if I have to buy it. Well, it turned out I couldn't just buy it for a couple bucks. Cause this game is really inexpensive. It's only like it's always on sale for like a dollar or two every time there's a major sale, and you could get it relatively inexpensive. And all the DLC is like a few cents to a dollar or two. It they know they know the value of their game is all about the community and people playing together. So they make it like accessible for everyone. And the, it's not that they don't update it anymore either. There's always new content for this game. They've been releasing mission maps and mission DLC inexpensively, so you have, like, mission game modes that you can play as without downloading a custom map. I think it's really cool. Well, technically it is downloading a custom map because you're downloading the DLC files, but I still think it's cool that they're making the official versions because they realize that people want that kind of content and they're giving it to them in the type of format that they want. With all these janky zombs in it.
Uh, it's cool. That's the question of YouTube being a butthole again, and um, talking about holiday skins and replayability, which is something I definitely don't get in a lot of games anymore. Like, I'll play a game off and on, but I'll often play a game for a few hours and then never pick it back up again, because I'm just like, okay. Like, Transistor was the example of a game I didn't necessarily want to finish, but I felt I should just so I can take the footage and go back and edit it so I can make a review, which I still need to do. Because Transistor's problem as a game was that it kind of just started throwing enemy levels at you, and the only way to, like, speed up your own leveling process was to use these, um... these I enemy inhibitor chips, which basically just buffed your enemies ridiculously and gave you a small increase in the XP that you got. And I just didn't find that fun, and fights just became very grindy, very fast, and... I got really grouchy, so that's why I stopped making the Let's Play videos, because I just got grumpy playing that game, and I decided it was not going to be good viewing. And, I mean, it, it, it certainly looked good, and the way that they handled, like, stop time and set up your, your strategy was cute initially, but then it got old really fast, because you were just like, okay, well, I did this cool combo, and it said it was going to kill everything, but it only took them to half health because the, this, the stats lied to me, and now I can't do anything until it recharges, except sprint around and pray I don't get shot in the face. So, that was fun, I guess. Definitely had some potential, and it was a very pretty game, and it was a very relaxing game in some level with however the weird antagonists were supposed to be doing stuff. Just, uh, was not my... Uh, it was not rife for replayability, and it was not rife for an extended time in the game playing the challenge maps. Because again, you know, it was just same stuff, just grinding over and over and over again. And it was from the same people that made the game Bastion, and Bastion, I could definitely just grind the crap out of Ban Bastion and play that a lot. Because it was cute, the narrator was great. The narrator in, in like, in tr Transistor was like the chick's, the main character's love interest, and... Well, I'm, I'm, I'm neither female nor gay, so... The, the intrigue of the love interest being your narrator was kind of lost on me. I just didn't care. I'm sure for the female audience that might have been tasty, might have been not, might have been indifferent. Wait, the, uh, the narrator was a girl? No, yeah. the narrator was a dude, and you were playing uh, as a chick. Oh, oh, that's, yeah. So, him, like, and he was kind of like the love interest of the chick. Like, sacrificed himself to save her, and he, like, lives inside the sword. The transistor CPU sword that she uses as a weapon. And, I mean, like, the love story is kind of implied, and it's kind of charming, but... I don't know. He had, like, small talk-style commentary, and it just got a name after a while. I was just not sold on it. Like the art, though. Art was definitely what kept me going through that game. And the art's probably the most important part of the game. I mean, they always say that the, the first taste of any game you get is through your eyes, your eye holes. And then the second is like the gameplay. So like the first piece of gameplay really has to sell you, and then yada yada yada, all the story kind of carries it from there. But um, the story was okay. It was basically like you're in, everyone's living in this computerized world that's inside of like Tron basically. And there's a bunch of, like, new famous people that are, like, changing it and, like, tweaking it for the future, this next generation of young people. And then, like, their version of the mafiosos decided they liked life how it was. They're, like, the crazy conservatives of the game. So they released this viral phage called, um, actually don't, The Process, which was controlled by the transistor that you have. And it basically backfired and is destroying the world. So that wasn't the best. Let that be a lesson to you. Can't stop progress even if it makes you feel spicy. Which is what the Pope has learned. He has admitted that science does not go against God. And that, hey, 
be God was behind the Big Bang. I have no opinion on that, because religion doesn't factor into my life. But, hey, to each their own. And I think that kind of opinion of life in general is very healthy. Very open-minded for the Catholic Church, honestly. That's, that's really what I got from it. You know, the He's Catholic very Church is kind of like down the, to earth guy. The Catholic Church is always seen as like the strictest religion, and you know it's good seeing that they're actually willing to uh, bend on some of those topics. Well, Pope Francis, I mean, some of the popes previously, like the guy just before him, who was like the evil emperor, was what everyone associated was him his with. Name John Paul? No, John Paul was the one before him. It was the the Pope everyone really liked, but was kind of still kind of controversial at the same time. Um, was he a uh, choir voice? No, he, he was just like... He didn't do a lot to stem the tide of, like, pedophile priests. He kind of hit it, and it kind of came out in hindsight that he was kind of hiding a lot of the church's dirty laundry in the, in the back closet. But, um... Despite all that, and what your opinions are of that, like, Pope Francis established that the Catholic Church had been steadily alienating itself to the young people, and if the young people don't give a crap about you, then your organization is gonna be hurting for people involved in the future. So, um, smart move on his part. And, uh, yeah, whatever, if that's your thing you agree or disagree with that, whatever. I don't particularly have a stance other than good for Pope Francis. It's it's not it's not unheard of in my household or in my family when we when we get together for me to like hear about the latest thing that Pope Francis has done and be like, damn it Francis, you're so good. Damn it. Can't hate you. Why? Why would you do this? I like my hatred. It's me feisty. And uh, what what wave are we on? We're on wave uh, six. Uh, yeah. Soon I'm gonna buy the fancy husk gun. You guys will love that. Yes. Oh, speaking That's of right. people getting involved getting in gnarly stuff in the news, the Blade Runner is going to prison for shooting his fiance. What? Remember that, that guy? Harrison Ford? No, 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 no. The the athlete from the Olympics without legs. He had artificial legs. Mm, sure. I forget his, I think it was Pistorius, was that his name? But, um, he, he made up a bunch of BS about why he shot his girlfriend when she was in the, t the bathroom. He's like, I woke up and I thought there was an intruder, so I asked if she was there and she didn't answer. So I thought maybe the intruder got her, so I fired into the bathroom. And killed her. And I'm, yeah. So it's unfortunate because he meant a lot to a lot of people who were disabled. And what they could accomplish in the world. But... You know, don't be a dick and shoot your girlfriend. That shit ain't cool. God. Instead of shooting her, just uh, tell her she's wrong. It'll mean twice as much. Well, she was cheating on him. I guess she was going to leave him. And my response is, you're the Blade Runner. You're super famous. You can get any girlfriend you pretty much want yeah, now. Can't put a price on love. I mean, sure, being dumped sucks, but at some point you got to, like, take a step back from yourself and say... I'm in a good place in life. I don't need them. Screw it. Not or even if you're in a bad place. place. Even if you're not at that place, like... <laughs> just be like, yeah, maybe murdering them and doing stuff to their corpse and then so telling just, their family I, is a I bad just plan. I drove an hour the other night for an OkCupid okay date. <laughs> it's true. Mozzie, uh, Mozzie does the OkCupid okay and he recommends it to me. I got all the way to first base, guys. Yay! And she doesn't look like a forest troll. That seems like a downside to me. Have you seen how frickin' minxy those forest trolls can get in bed? Mm. They don't get to do it very often. It's true, they're like sloths. They only mate periodically. I don't know how that's possible. <laughs> they get to save their energy. They, they just have to try harder. Oh, I'm getting molested, aren't I, by a flesh pounder. Yep, that's a flesh pounder that I lit on fire. One of the perks to being a firebug is you notice how... Okay, is he dead? You'll notice how they get, like, red and burnt when I murder them with the fire. The bigger, nastier monsters that take quite a bit of carousing and convincing to kill, um, they get crispy, which means that they move slower. It's harder for... What is hitting me? In short, more dots. 
Warlocks. Yes, Warlocks. Get on that shit. But I'm a pyromancer. You're a dude with a flamethrower, Jimmy. Just you gotta yeah, ruin all well of these things warlock. for me. This is not D and D. Good grief. So, anything uh, in the news that's interested you recently, Mazel Wazel? Uh, people are freaking out. Ebola is in New York City. Oh, whatever. Which is pretty much a repeat of Ebola is in D.C. Did you hear that rap about Ebola that came out recently? No, but it sounds Where amazing. It's like, it's like, Ebola, don't touch your friends. I, I haven't listened to it, but everyone's been telling me I need to watch it, so I might do that tonight. There's uh, John Oliver, uh, who has a show to you uh, last week tonight with John Oliver. Yeah, I love John Oliver. God, I, I really like that show. Uh, much, got... better, much better than The Daily Show, in my opinion. It's, it's like more seriously toned. Like, John Stewart wants to crack a joke in every line, but John Oliver actually like is bringing the real issues right up to you. Well, John Oliver brings up the most spicy issues, but instead of just taking the easy jokes, we have a uh, flesh pounder back here. I'm using the husk gun, the gun that the fire shooting zombies use, and it is powerful as I charge it up. I can put a hurtin' on these flesh pounders, and I'm actually intentionally bugging out his pathing so he doesn't immediately murder me. God damn it, Dr. Fuckface, you stole some kills. I love the names of yourself that. I love the names of people in here. So I can either charge the gun up, or I can just do a quick bullet blast to light stuff on fire. Incredibly useful for AOEing large groups. But yeah, that song is just like Ebola, don't touch your friends, no kissing, a bunch of other crap. It was great. I'm gonna. Oh, I've been abandoned here. I think I've got. Armor and lots of fire. Where did you guys go? We're in the, uh, the big love room. tunnel? Yeah. Uh, it's more a tunnel of love, really. Alright, well, I'm coming down. I kinda got excited and went off half-cocked. Well, full-cocked. You can't really half-cock this it. gun. <laughs> Larry the Chupacabra is never half-cocked. Well, it's true, it's, I'm usually full mass. Of his cock. Everything that he does. <laughs> it's true. And I mean, so what happened last night was like, I was playing, I was trying to start this Let's Relax cock. series with Triad Ninja, my buddy who played Killing Floor with me a long time ago at the dawn of this channel, before I figured I wanted to really do stuff seriously on YouTube. And I was trying to screen share with him over Google Hangouts, but that was choppy and crappy and he couldn't hear the audio from Dead Space. So I attempted to use my capture device, the Elgato, to stream it to him and record it to him. However, I couldn't kind of do both because the stream was choppy. And so rather than putting out a choppy piece of crap, because I always have a certain level of quality and um, standards with my content, I'm trying to make sure it's as good as it can be. I tossed it out. Isn't he oh. great? So yeah, I do I do, do things full cocked. Full phallist. Um, that's gonna be a thing on the channel now. Thanks, Mozzie, you bastard. Let's explore let's explore the rest of this. That's horrifying. Gives a hundred percent of his cock into everything. <laughs> so, Especially yeah. small children. Okay. That's enough, Mr. Mr. Pastor, just settle down. So upstairs is the angel area, and downstairs here is the demon area. And I hate this. This level is actually kind of evil, because there's like these grates everywhere that stuff comes out of. We're back in the tunnel. Yeah, I'm coming up. I know where you're at. Somebody's getting touched. You don't know where you at. This gun is also a little e harder to use than... Oh, that is a flesh pounder behind us. I'm gonna put a few rounds into him. It's up to those guys, though. Oh, I am thoroughly in first place for kills. Thoroughly. My last place? Uh, no. Almost. Mr. Goldeneye, Mr. Golden level, the level 6 is in last place. I guess you can aim this gun. 
You know, one of the only things I don't like about this game, or maybe something I do like about this game, it's incredibly easy to headshot from the hip. It is, and that's shark. intentional. If you're, if you kind of figured it out, I'm getting back into the swing of it. What is hitting me? Oh, this, this invisible chick. I all, in darker levels like this, the the little phantom chicks that go invisible. I don't always notice them as a firebug until I've like shot something and my bullet didn't go very far. I'm like, oh, there was one of them invisible ladies. But they give the best blowjobs. She's jobs. trying to sneak her to us and stab us just <laughs> like a woman. Up, oh, Dr. Fuckface is left. So he died. I mean, he is a fuckface, so I guess I'm not super sad about that. The only, one of the downsides about being a firebug is these fire guys, they share my immunity to fire unless I have this husk gun. And I plant one in their face. Just like I was... what's that guy? Ron Jeremy. That's the one. I've, so, one of my ongoing jokes in League of Legends right now is I think they need to make the, the, like, the wine-throwing character, Gragas. Gragas. I think they need to give Gragas a Ron Jeremy skin. That'll never, ever, ever happen. Ever. What would but it's he throw? fun to think about. What would he throw instead of, uh, instead of Lubricant, a... Lubricant? Barrel of lube? That's disgusting. Amazing is what it is, so you take that back. I regret none of my comments. Oh, that's a, that's a flesh pound and I need help with it because I'm out of bullets for the, uh, the husk gun. The husk gun is very ammo inefficient if you want to do any major damage to anything. Why do they always attack me? Because you got in its way, bro. Try and keep you alive. There we go. I never even get the kill for it either. I only do that when I'm playing the sharpshooter and I spam them in the dome. That's what I just did. I didn't get the kill for it. Eh, they're, you'd just be happy they're dead. It only counts as one kill in a sea of murder and uh, homicide. So what do we got up on the, uh, the listy? Oh yeah, Pornhub. The people who got that billboard taken down in Times Square recently, they have uh, <laughs> sponsored an esports team. What? Yeah. What hub has what an esports team? What game? What team? League of Legends. I don't remember the name of the team. Oh, League of Legends team? They had some that they figured they were going to be sponsoring. I'm not sure. Is it Chinese or American? Um, I don't know yet. They haven't really fully announced everything last time I checked. So. I need to look that shit up. The fun thing about Pornhub, and no matter what your opinions I mean, are of quite porn... quite a few things of Pornhub are fun. Well, yeah. But despite your opinions on porn, the creation, usage, and um, denominations of porn, um, Pornhub is very respectful about their advertising, funny enough. And um, they also realize that there are certain things in the world that are very um, prominent and important right now. Like esports is a good example, and yeah, well, I mean, Coca-Cola cool. sponsored uh, League of Legends last year for the Worlds. Yeah, I think it's cool that different companies are doing that, and I also think it's good that these guys are setting a very healthy, very respectful precedent on how to advertise smut in the regular world, not just on creepy banners on websites that we only talk about in passing as our own dirty little secrets. And so, yeah, I thought that was neat. And I also thought they should have just left the Times Square ad there. Honestly, it was not an offensive ad, other than the fact that it was advertising for a pornography company. I mean, yeah. But yeah, I like thought I it was in down, good not taste. It was offended. Offensive. And, uh, I mean, it was in good taste. But I thought that that um, that hotel who offered pre-approved um, billboard space, not to let everything be pre-approved, like the credit card companies. So I thought that was freaking hilarious. I gotta stop charging up my weapon, I'm wasting ammo. My, my worst habit with the lever action rifle is I don't stop put bullets in it as I fire. So then like I'll get ten zombies in my face and I have to reload every every shot. 
Just be glad you don't use, you're not playing the support specialist who specializes in shotguns, and you're not attempting to use the hunting shotgun. It's the, the most, it's one of the most powerful per damage shots in the game, but you have to reload it every time you shoot it. Every single time. This is gonna be bad, just FYI. I'm covering us with, with shots and fire, but there's a limit. There's a distinctive limit here to how much I can do for us. Uh, we might get wiped out again. This is the part where everyone really has to have a big fancy weapon that has some ammo left, or else you are going to get killed. And the next wave, we are going to fight the boss, known as the Patriarch, the, the scientist who mutated himself, who is responsible for all of these crazy mutant uh, creatures that touch your face and your other body parts in ways that you are Holy not entirely crap. comfortable with. Scritch just doesn't give any fucks. Well, he got killed now. If I had realized... That's the problem with this dark room, too. If I had realized he was still alive, I would have used my last charge to kill him. Um, oh, I have an AK. That's handy, I suppose. I need to pick up a gun, I guess. I have more than enough money for you, dude. Just come to me. Yes! Maybe on me a little. Mmm. I get it. It's a sex joke. It's a porn joke. Do you, uh, I mean, do you remember, um, a couple years ago, uh, there was a Chinese guy that got busted, uh, he was, he was working for some big company that had, like, a big, uh, you know, out building advertisement going on outside. Where are you? I'm, uh, in the place. I got you. There, have some money. There's no sense in keeping it, because I'm not going to be able to use it after this round. Oh, bro, bro. That's what you got? Here you go, here's all of it. You spicy harlot. Mm. 50 cal ammo is really, really expensive. I figured. But yeah, there's a, um... There was a Chinese worker, uh... Who had... There was a, a giant video advertisement outside of his building. And, uh... He had his computer connected to that, and then he swapped to a porn browser. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, it was. it was. There was a time on, I think it was CNN or MSNBC that it got discovered that some dude was looking at porn. Like, you can see, like... They had, like, a screen cap where, like, you can see him, like, notice that he accidentally switched to a porn tab at work, and then, like, turn around and see if people noticed, because, like, he noticed they were on the air, quickly turns around and changes it to anything else. Oh, and yeah, this guy, um... He's the... Redneck police officer. The sheriff. Yeah. The sheriff. He can one-shot you doing that stuff. I need to heal real fast. Now we have the wave spawning for the boss. Boss has three phases. Every time he kneels down, he takes a shot of his healing syringe, and then disappears with his cloak and runs off. Hobo style. Man, Reddit's full of, of stories about people that, like... Said porn running on the on the air or something. Yeah, or people that hack like they discover that a billboard or something has got like an open IP that isn't properly passworded, and so they will hack into it and change it to something. Just like when people go and change like the billboard or like the automated signs for construction, zombies ahead instead of whatever. And so I talked to a friend of mine who actually works for those con those co those companies as, like, the uh, site manager. And he says most of those are actually just rented from some company. And they don't really bother with security because they use so many different ones of them. That usually, either they don't have a password at all and they just use, like, a cheap padlock that they usually don't even bother to lock. Or they just have the password written on the inside of the manual that's just underneath of the keyboard for it. I can kill this guy. Alright, he's going into phase three, he's gonna run, run off. We are... are you alive, yes! Crazy? We are about to be screwed. Oh, with that attitude, we're not... I mean, with that attitude, we totally are? Yes. Both the things. Yeah. More than likely. Uh-oh. 
I'm out of ammo for that good gun. Good thing I got grenades. I must have my I have AK. Five 50 cal shots left. <laughs> Heal yourself, bro. Uh. Gee. I'm dead. It's all up to you, man. You can do it. I believe in you. You're dead. <laughs> Patriarch is the hardest part, especially if you don't have anyone to tank it. Yeah. I, I mean, I tried. <laughs> and Chummy Bear's like, you guys should have healed each other. And like, thanks for the advice after the fact, Chummy Bear. Obviously, we're not All very right. good at this game. Well, I'm going to disconnect and uh, do our outro. Thanks, everybody, for joining me and Mozzie today for our little Halloween uh, Let's Relaxification, Relaxination. So, relax. Relax. We're doing it before. Relax -a the relaxational thingy. Yeah, we're doing this ahead of time, but we're going to release it on Halloween. Oh. And, a, and a, welcome to our Let's Relax um, series. It's going to be a work in progress. I really decided I want to make this series after I saw the Let's Drown Out series done by Yahtzee, because I love his zero punctuation stuff. But, um, you know, I, I think it's a good format, and it's very long, it's very long form. Very, you know, just chill and talk about stuff for, like, less than complicated games that you don't really have to concentrate too much on. And we can talk about current events as, like, a podcast or a vlog. And just have fun. Yeah, something you I like turn it. on while you're playing one of the games, like Killing Floor, available on Steam for just four ninety nine. Yeah, so, I mean, we'll be playing all sorts of games. Probably a lot of multiplayer games, because I don't have the ability to have all of my remote friends join me. In my house. Some of them, like Triad, will probably be in Colorado soon, so I might be able to do that with him. Uh, but, maybe um, in about a year I'll make the trip over. <laughs> you thinking about moving to Colorado? Uh, my si yeah, uh, my sister and um, her husband have been planning it for a while. They visited uh, the Denver area a while ago and they loved it, so they're going to try it. I forget, what are you going to school for? Uh, nothing, I'm not going to school right now. Oh, what do you want to go to school for? Uh, nothing yet. <laughs> I, I went uh, man after my own I heart. Went to college, and I uh, basically ran out of money without knowing what I wanted to do. So I decided I wasn't going to jump into school without a clear plan set down. And as I don't have a plan yet, I don't really. I'm not going to school. Ah, well, there are worse things. I mean, when I went into college, I had won a couple of awards and a couple of um, miniature prize scholarships. Not a full ride, it's just like, here's money that we're calling a scholarship. I'm like, okay, that's cool. Um, for a couple of sculptures I did, one of an armature, um, they said it was an angel, it was actually supposed to be a demon, so maybe it wasn't as good as I thought it was. But, um, and then I forget what the other one is, it was one of my installations at the school. And so I went into college and I looked at all the degrees and I didn't really want to be um, a gallery artist. Right. You know? You know, I didn't want to, like, make sculptures and have to sell them to galleries I, to try and make money. I feel like a lot of the college, like, you, you go into college and, like, pretty much unless you know what you want to do from the beginning of your college career, you're either going to go for a general degree that will help you get a job, don't get me wrong, like, you know, people are more likely to hire you. They say, oh, yeah, you put time in college, so we're going to hire you because you're poor as shit and we feel bad. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, I mean so I went into college, and I was like, well, I, I don't really want to do any of these um, sculpture majors. And, like, <sighs> three years in, they actually opened up a sculpture major called Transmedia that I could have taken, which combines graphic design and sculpture as this sort of, like, um, degree that's, des that's aimed at making you, like, a corporate sculptor. So you make, like, the sculptured inside pieces for, like, plaster moldings and stuff like that, and, like granite stuff and designing furniture and different installations for inside like buildings and homes and parks and but I didn't do that so I looked at the degrees and I said well I don't really want to be a fine artist because I don't see a path for me there but I was just like well I was pretty good at graphic design in high school I let's be fair I had taken one computer course in high school that involved playing with Photoshop I opened a Pandora's box, like, I didn't know the importance of, tr of typography, but now I'm, like, a typography nerd, and I didn't really understand, you know, pretty much anything that goes into being, like, just, a, like, a designer in general beyond a graphic designer. 
So that was a wild ride and kind of a pain in the ass for a while there. But now I'm a UI, UX, um, branding, web, and illustrator guy. Go figure. Went from sculpture to, like, pretty much everything flat and 2D in cyberspace. And I am a professional college dropout. Still going through life with his uh, part-time job, trying to get to full-time. That's hard where I am. And, uh, yeah, gonna try to figure something out here but in two years. Otherwise, I'm just gonna get a full-time job and plow my way through uh, life. And through OKCube. With 100% of dick used. <laughs> We go full cock here at the Chupacabras there. All right, guys. Well, that's that's the end of our little show. Once again, thanks for joining us. If you have any questions for us or topics you'd like us to talk about in future shows, please feel free to drop them in the comments. We'd be more than happy to, uh, to answer those. And even if we don't put them into the show itself, um, I'll force Mozzie to log into his YouTube account and uh, comment and answer it. If they're for him, and I'll try to get to the ones that are for me, or if they're just general purpose, we'll answer together. So until next time, uh, if you enjoyed this show, please throw us a like or even a dislike if you didn't like it. Let us know what's going on. Yeah, and watch time. And um, be sure to subscribe because that's how you can get these however often we post them. I have zero idea, but uh, we don't even know what we're going to name this yet. three seconds to click a button and we get money for it. So please. I mean, yeah, we might get money for it. We don't know uh, yet. I don't get a lot of money off these like, videos. You know, popularity, which can lead to money. It's a long, drawn-out, We're getting validation process. from the internet, and that's what feeds Next our delectable is, egos. It means so very little to you and so very much to us. So please help us out. Yeah, but yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe or even dislike us. Let us know what's hey, going on. Is good Definitely publicity. throw us a comment. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Um, how often do I want to do this? Maybe at least once a month I plan on doing this. I'm trying to change up the format to try and see what we like to do about it. And um, we might do it more often if it becomes more popular. So, until next time, I'm your host, Larry the Chupacabra. And Chupacabra. Best friend, this has been Mozzie. Yep, maybe not the best friend. I mean, there is that guy uh, that we made out of bacon. Five. Yeah, definitely top five. I mean, definitely above Skydo by a large <laughs> margin. That's what Skydo laughs like. The people yeah, said so, on that. Yeah, so uh, well, as we're leaving off here, I met Mozzie through this guy called Skydo, who he went to school with for a while. And Skydo is a part of a group who's twi- like, uh, well, no, no, it wasn't Twitter, it was um, Ventrilo server that I hung out with. And their primary game group hung out on a forum online and role played being Sith from the Star Wars universe. Anyway, that- Anyway, that's it for now. Bye, guys. Love you.